this is exciting. This is Cubelet by Modular Robotics. It's uh, one of the first 100 beta release kits of this new modular robotic toy. It's a toy for ages 8 and up, so that includes us. Therefore, let's open it. That's what's inside. A bunch of cubes in various colors and charging electronics. The cubes are magnetic. So, let's start sorting them. So what we've got here, these are the action blocks. All of them have some action, like wheels, a speaker. We've got sense cubes. These are the inputs. So one of them is a dial, distance, sensors. We've got the all-important battery block, power supply for all the robots we will be building. And we've got the think cubes. They help you uh, implement logic in the robots. So first we need the battery cube. We need to switch it on on the back, otherwise nothing's going to be working. Take one of the inputs and the simplest output, the bar chart. So when we turn the dial up, the output goes up. So what's happening here is that the information is traveling from the sense cube to the action cube. Let's see what other outputs we have. got a flashlight actuator cubes that you can use to make your robot move so this one's got wheels so you can make the robot drive away and finally this is the rotation cube So let's build our first real robot out of this, this has some, which has some useful function. The rotator sometimes gets stuck. In the final release I'm sure that will be fixed. Now we've seen all the outputs. Let's check out what the inputs are. We've already seen the dial cube will use at the input, but there are some others that you can use for other fancy things. So this is one of the two distance cubes that are included. So when you come close to it, the signal goes up. When you move away, the signal goes down. This one is the light sensitivity cube. The signal is all the way up. And finally, what we've got here is the temperature sensor. I put it in the freezer earlier and the signal actually went down. But I can't show you here on the table. And finally, what we haven't talked about yet are the logic cubes. So let's put the battery and an input and an output. But in between, let's put one of these red guys here. So instead of the signal going up, when I turn the dial up, the signal is going down. That's because the red cube is the negate block. So every signal that's flowing through it from an input to an output gets inverted. There are some other think cubes in here, like the dark green one, which is just a blocker. So that prevents any kind of thinking, only the power is flowing through, but the signal doesn't pass. And the light green ones, which just pass the signal without doing anything to it. Well, let's check out these other fancy colors, and we need to start building some more complex robots. Let's take two inputs, the two distance sensors, let's connect them with one of the passive cubes that only pass power and information. Attach the battery so we can do anything with them. And uh, use... Let's just attach it any output right now. So what we get is basically an average of what 
the two sensors are sensing. Now let's put this guy in between. This is the beige cube. And you'll notice nothing happens when I move one of the hands closer to the sensor. But if I bring both closer, the signal goes all the way up. So this cube is the minimum block. It takes all the signals that are coming in from the two sensors and only passes the minimum to the output. The brother of the mini minimum block is the maximum one, which always passes the highest signal as opposed to the lowest. Of course we can now use the blocker to attach a completely different set of sensor an actuator here, so I'm getting the flashlight output now. Here it is. So no matter what I do here with my maximum cube and my two distance sensor, it doesn't affect the flashlight. The flashlight's only affected by the light sensitivity sensor that I've got right next to it because it's separated from the rest of the structure with the blocker cube. build a little robot train. Let's try something more exciting. Let's get rid of this dial and to a robot that reacts to its environment. So we still use the two wheel blocks and mount a distance sensor on each of them and uh, put the blocker cube in the middle so that they don't exchange information between Not that if we wouldn't have the blocker cube in between, both of them would get both signals. So when I place my hand behind this one, both of them drive, but the side where the hand is next to the sensor is driving a little faster than the other ones. And we can use the inverter block again to change the behavior. So when it's light, it turns slowly, but when I block it, it starts turning faster. So let's try to build a robot that stops when it hits a wall. So we'll use a light sensor for that because it's dark and the sensor is right up against the wall. This is the drive block and the battery. Perfect. So you'd think that you can achieve the same thing by using a negate block and a distance sensor. Because when the sensor is right up to the wall, the signal would be high, so it gets negated and gives a very low signal when it's against the wall, but a very high signal when it's far away from the wall. So let's try that. So what you just saw is one of the problems with using infrared distance sensors. They have this dead zone in the 2 or 3 centimeters right in front of them. So when the sensor is right up against the wall, it can't actually see it. You need to be that far away to be able to spot the wall.
So let's do some sensor fusion. We'll use three sensors to get a good average estimation of how close to a wall we are. So to explain that, we've got one distance sensor here, one distance sensor here, they both have a negate block, so the closer you get, the smaller the signal gets, and up front, basically as the shutoff switch, we've got the light sensor, so when this touches the wall, it signals goes down all the way. They get combined in the passive cube, and then only the minimum of them gets passed on to the two motors that drive this train across the table. Now here's a hint, when you use the distance sensors, you can either use them so that the two sensors are on top of each other or next to each other. I would advise that you always go with the two sensors on top of each other, because this gives me much better results in my playing.